We were expecting uh, Mr. Atif Bajwa, uh, CEO, Bank Al Fala, to join us, uh, but due to uh, he being not uh, feeling well, he's not here. Uh, but then we have, uh, uh, in, his, in his absence, uh, uh, we have uh, Mr. Uh, Muhammad Imran, uh, who, has, who has joined us. Uh, Dr. Mohammad Imran is an Islamic banking professional with a unique combination of uh, uh, practical experience in the industry as well as in academia. He has the honor of working directly under Hazrat Aki Usmani Saab uh, and uh, he has an interesting background of working with leading multinational like uh, Philips and Shells. He also worked uh, uh, for Bank Islami, for Yubel Lamin, and also worked for uh, National Bank of Oman and currently he is a group head of uh, Bank Al Fala Islamic in Pakistan. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome uh, Dr. Mohammad Imran. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyid al-Mursaleen. Muhammad wa alayhi sahabi ajmain. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri. Wa halu luqdada misan yafqa wa qawli. Dr. Shrat Hussain sahab, Irfan Siddiqui sahab, uh, my colleagues from the banking industry, students from different madaris and the banking sector, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Twenty years back, it was the same hall called Darbar in Sheraton Hotel, where in June 2002, a conference was held. I was the chief executive of Center for Islamic Economics. Dr. Ishrat was the governor of State Bank of Pakistan. And the person whose speech you'll just listen after a few minutes, Mufti Taqi Usmani sahab, he took a pledge from all the participants, we raised our hands, and we committed to him that inshallah, in whatever capacity we can, we'll contribute to this cause of Islamic banking. 20 years down the line, alhamdulillah, we see Islamic banking having a 20% market share of the industry. By no means this is a small feat. Starting from zero, reaching to 20% in 20 years has taken a lot of efforts from most of them who are already in this hall. But that is what I call Islamic Finance 1.0. That was the first step of the journey. And that was more focused on Islamic banking in letter. We had to lay down the foundations of Islamic banking in terms of the infrastructure, in terms of the branches, in terms of the Sharia compliance governance framework, in terms of the product development, in terms of the development of the Sharia scholars as well as the banking professionals. Alhamdulillah, by the grace of Allah, that phase has been achieved to a certain level of success. But that takes us to the next step of Islamic finance that I call Islamic finance 2.0. And that is Islamic finance in a spirit. So what is Islamic finance 2.0? To understand this, let's understand the two mindsets that are practiced globally in terms of the business and economic practices. The first mindset is the mindset of taking, of grabbing, and that is based on the strategy of C and G. The C stands for competition, and G stands for greed. So cutthroat competition, rat race, all these jargons have been come up from that competition and greed that is engraved into the mindset of taking. Then there is that mindset of giving. And interestingly, that is also based on CNG, but that is cooperation and generosity. Islamic finance in its spirit is based on the concept of giving, not on the concept of taking. So what are we doing in terms of cooperation and generosity? How much contribution can we make in Islamic finance 2.0 towards the society? For that, I'll quote an example that we often quote to our customers. That is, what is the difference between Islamic and conventional? The easiest way out is slaughtering an animal. So we say, when you slaughter an animal without taking the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, although the meat is, might be tasty, but since the process has not been followed, it's haram. What if the process has been followed? Bismillah Allah Akbar has been recited. The slaughter has been done as per the Sharia. And there is one retail shop in the suburbs of Sydney where most of the Muslims are residing in Australia. And that one retail shop goes along and buys all the cattle in the farm. And the small retail shops are left high and dry. Now that is where the process is followed well. The meat is halal, but the spirit is about gaining at the uh, expense of suffering of the others. So what can we do? 
to, to take care of this. That takes us to a 3G strategy. The first G is giving to all. Giving to all means giving to all segments of the society. To the personnel with disability, to the women in the society, to the far-flung areas in the agricultural farms of the country, and those who are sitting outside. Interestingly, Islamic banks have already started working on that. Irfan Saab just showed you that 25% of the uh, Russian digital account deposits is already with one Islamic bank. What if we grow it to a further level? The second one is about the G that is giving it back, giving it back to the community. You'd be happy to know that uh, along with the State Bank of Pakistan, we at Bank Al-Fala and Mizan Bank have drafted a country report of sustainable development goals that takes care of all the points that Ms. Seema Kamil mentioned here about poverty alleviation, education, and small baby steps taken by the Islamic banks can go a long way. So we have sponsored five students at IBA, lifetime sponsorship, establish a chair at NUST. We are establishing five schools with the Citizens Foundation in Karachi called the Alfala campus. These steps can go a long way towards the development of that workforce that eventually work in the Islamic banks. And the third G is giving it forward. The Gen Zs, the ones who are born after 1997, they basically are now 25 years old and they comprise of 22, uh, uh, the, these comprise of 22 million in Pakistan only. So now we have to introduce this course of Islamic banking not only at the college level but at school level. We have to train them and provide them the service not only through the branches but through the digital channel. I am sure if we go along with this way of the concept of giving, practicing the three G's of giving it to all, giving it back to the community and giving it forward, Islamic Banking 2.0 will be a success just like we had in the last 20 years. Thank you very much.